that keep on reinflaming the same wound, right? That's right. the other point. Yeah. Hmm. You, you, you're not you're not living a private life. You're not living a life where you can easily disengage from this. You're you're living a life where you're constantly getting re-triggered and re-inflamed with the same issue. Yeah. And it's it's like the the Zen parable about the, the master comes up each day and beats you over the head with a stick. And then he leaves and you say, wow, there must be some great spiritual teaching that he's giving me. There must be some heavy reason for why he feels I need to be beaten. And then after a year or so of him doing this every day, you finally get so frustrated that one day you grab the stick before it hits your head. And then the master says, oh, now you are learning. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Oh, that's a good one. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, exactly. It, It really can be that simple sometimes. And you really kind of need to identify also what your own will in all of this is i mean uh, to some extent you know when when enough is enough and you know say that and and make sure to you know stand for that you know (laughs) that's important too you know Um, i like to i liken it to decohering that's one of the things i call it um there are there are environments that you can go into that are very decohering Mm -hmm. and coherence of consciousness is really important because if any of you out there have read my work and studied my materials on divinecosmos.com is the website you're going to see repeated documentation showing a compelling case that we're heading into some sort of dimensional shift, that the planet is going through a transformation so profound and so vast in scope that if we really could know what it was going to be like on the other side, it would be too depressing because we wouldn't want to hang in there through what we're dealing with right now. But thankfully, you know, we see enough of it that we can be enamored with the possibility of a future that's that wonderful. Mm. But right now, there's also a spiritual reality that we're living in that says that we very much can change everything about how we think and how we feel. And that's the really amazing gift of esoteric study, is you have the potential to change your life and become anything you want to be and do anything you want to do. The potentials are limitless. Mm. And they're only limited by the limitations that you decide to set on yourself. Now, there's people out there that get in the law of attraction and they want to say, oh, if I just put this picture of a mansion on my refrigerator and drool over it every day, then I'm going to get a mansion. Right. It doesn't work like that. It does work like the more that you want from the world, the more you should be giving to the world. So if you want all these wonderful assets and all these wonderful material affluent things, what is the value that you're creating that will cause the consciousness field to say, divert more resources to this person? Uh, Because this person is going to make use of those resources and the inspiration those resources will create. Mm. Now, that doesn't change the fact that even if you're on a very simple path in terms of your worldly ambition, you're just basically have a steady job and you get up in the morning you go to work and you come home and that's your reality uh if you're if you're doing the job of keeping a positive attitude and being loving towards other people that's enough you know that's all that we really have to do there's no divine source that's up there judging you saying oh you should be a spiritual teacher you should be doing readings you should be doing massage therapy you should be doing reiki healing Nothing like that. You know, if you want to do those things, that's cool. But our society, even as it evolves into fourth density, we're still going to need all these other jobs to be taken. Sure. And so not everybody's going to become a guru. Not everybody's going to become a, an amazing healer. But the, the, only real, the only real caveat is, you know, do what you want to do with your life, but just do it with love and with positive focus. Mm. And when you do that and you maintain that frequency... The consciousness field is biased in your direction, and and all these things will be attracted to you. All this uh, love and affluence and um, and manifestations. You'll have things that synchronistically and miraculously show up exactly the way you need them when you need them. And that is part of the promise of good karma. Karma is not just something that comes around and bites you in the butt when you've been, uh, you know, dishonoring other people's free will. Right. If you're doing positive work for the planet and you're generating all this good karma for yourself, it is a mandate that it will come back to you. It has to. That's that's universal law. Hmm. So you can lean on the positive karma. Now, a lot of times it's it's more difficult to make a direct chain of causality between something positive that you did and something positive that came back. 
whereas a lot of people are pretty good at spotting bad karma. It's pretty easy when you cut your finger open with a knife and you were just thinking, oh, my gosh, I really hate my parent, you know, something like that. But, you know, positive yeah. karma is very real, and that's, that's a deeper level of what's going on. So, yeah, yeah. what yeah. we're really talking about is, is the deeper work uh, that's beneath the surface layer of phenomenology. The phenomenology is like, you know, we could talk about government time travel projects and what they saw around 2012 and that it's like this vortex of, of time collapsing into singularity. We can talk about uh, ETs that have given us messages about what's going to happen after 2012 and that it's like a dimensional shift. We can talk about my personal experiences where I've met with these guys, ETs I mean, and, and that they've explained these things to me. But once you understand enough that you basically have made the case to your own satisfaction and you have at least some degree of an awareness that this could be real, it gets back to the work. And yeah. the work is ridiculously unglamorous compared to what the phenomenology looks like. Sure. Because the work is basically your life keeps handing you piles of crap <laughs> and you want to keep transforming them with your attitude into blessings. Right, right. <laughs> 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 you know, D David, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt right here, but I, I think we need to do like this. Uh, we, we need to begin to round things off here with, with this first segment. I have so many more questions, and I definitely want to talk more about the, the 2012 Enigma in our next segment. But I do want to spend a few minutes, though, and talking about your uh, the audio CD that you have out there, The Science of Peace. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about that, if you will. Well, thank you, Henrik. I appreciate that. Um, it's actually not a CD. It's an MP3 series. It was originally made for CD, so you can download it and burn it to CD if that's what you want to do, and a lot of people do that. We do not offer actual physical CDs for sale. That's an important point. Uh, here's the deal. I partnered up by a wonderful divine manifestation with a man named Larry Sire, who, as it turns out, has recorded over 500 uh, artists, including Eurythmics, Huey Lewis in the News, a bunch of country artists, including Garth Brooks, Dixie Chicks, George Strait, Willie Nelson, etc., uh, even though he did a lot of work in country, his actual real passion is more for like jazz and rock and ambient, meditative music. And he was just one person who wanted a reading from me back when I was still doing that. This was in uh, January 2005 that his, his, his uh, session was booked for. And so uh, I was just expecting another client like any other, not, nothing really extraordinary. And then he mentioned that he'd won nine Grammy Awards. Well, he was saying that he wanted to work on music with me. And, you know, my jaw hit the floor. Uh, and I said, well, this is interesting. And as it turns out, he also was a technician on a software platform called Giga Studio, which is what everybody is using to emulate orchestras. A lot of these movies you're seeing that have an orchestral soundtrack, it's actually not an orchestra, except for maybe one solo violin or one solo flute. Most of what you're hearing in movie scores is actually computer-generated. And if you actually are in that community of the Giga Studio stuff, you see Larry Sire, Larry Sire, Larry Sire all over the place when you're in this software. He's got a bass library and a, a drum library. That's They're both phenomenal. They're the best libraries you can get mm. for those instruments. Um, Stevie Wonder actually endorsed it. So the point is that here's this guy who simultaneously has this background in recording music and in computer-generated music. And we ended up using the best that his technology had to offer to create a soundtrack that's every bit as good as anything you'd hear in a movie or any other CD of its type. And I did a, three lectures, three CD-length lectures, uh, which talk about just, you know, we, we only scratch the surface of what I go into in Science of Peace, the DNA rearrangement and the 2012 stuff and, and galactic energy fields and... and I do a lot of stuff on the consciousness energy and how your consciousness is a non-local field that your mind is only interfacing with on a biological level. And I give all the science of that, and there's also on the third CD a great healing meditation. But the thing is, we sat down, and minute for minute throughout three CDs worth of content, we compose music that's perfectly matched to propel you into the true inspiration that the words can give. So it's like a wonderful marriage between music and voice, totally dedicated to making the content as inspirational as possible. And we've had a lot of people say that we could be charging a lot more for it than we do, 
But it was a big decision. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you something I haven't said publicly either. It took me two years to convince Larry to release this as a DRM-free MP3 file. Hmm. Uh, he only wanted to have it as a protected content that would be on a CD, but then we'd have to deal with shipping product and all that kind of stuff. And I finally said, Larry, it's been two years. Nobody's ever heard this thing. We've got to get it out there. So last year, in like March, I guess, we actually made it available as an MP3, um, and it has been a remarkable uh, effect ever since because, you know, I, I had problems legally with the film. I, I'm working on a film called Convergence the Movie, which deals with consciousness science, and our lawyers had advised me that I could not release Science of Peace because it was too similar to what was going to be in the movie. Hmm. I gave away a lot of the things that are in the movie. Right. Well, the movie has changed, and it's gone more into a direction like a Da Vinci Code-style thriller, and as a result of that, a lot of the stuff that's in Science of Peace will still be in the special features part of the DVD, like the documentary stuff, but the film itself is not a documentary. And therefore, the clamp that we had to put on this material was raised, and I was able to use it. So after two years of it being totally hidden from the world, we were able to put it out there uh, in this completed form. We added new music so that there's a five-disc thing you can get, which has two discs of just the music. And when I say discs, again, I mean MP3s that are disc length. Right. Uh, we're actually also planning on putting out an HD version. It has not happened yet. Some people want MP3s that are much higher uh, bandwidth. Uh, so we are going to do that in the future. It will obviously cost more. Um, and uh, so that's available on the site now, divinecosmos.com. There's a link to it on the front page. And another thing that I want to point out is that when you order this product, there is no middleman there is no commission going off to some third party. This, your, your money is 100% focused on getting me out and getting this information out to the planet mm. in the best way that I know how to do. And uh, other than the fact that I have to buy, you know, cases of beer and kilos of cocaine and all these other things to keep me high on a constant basis, <laughs> I'm teasing. Of course. No, I mean, you know, it's it's a wonderful way to keep me financed, and, sure, and all, sure. the, all the money that I make goes directly into serving others. Mm, very good. And, uh, yeah. So that is a web, uh, available on the website, divinecosmos.com. Head, head on over there and take a look. And, David, I just want to ask you here before we finish up our first segment, uh, aren't you also going to record uh, another album with the same uh, guy here? Yeah, we're actually getting ready to work on a vocal music album, which yeah. I'm very excited about. I actually do have a perfect pitch, and I can emulate a lot of different vocal styles. I can sing like many of the top vocalists very accurately. Uh, I have an excellent ability to mimic things. I can do wonderful impersonations of accents and sound like other people. And so I've been trying to figure out what do I want to sound like? What do I want my singing voice to sound like? Because I can sound great. And so we're actually getting ready to do a whole album we're kind of going to invoke like a 70s jazzy style uh, rock sound. Um, we're, we're, you know, we may go for like, like uh, a variety of different styles, but it's going to be a real amazing album because the engineer a lot of times has a great deal to do with what the album sounds like, and this is a guy that has created many, many chart-topping hits, and it's going to totally transform what I can do because when I do these public events, like I have a variety of them coming up this year, uh, that are, you know, the next one is the Harmony Festival coming up in Santa Rosa actually next weekend. Mm. And I have four different things I'm doing there. They've got me all over the place at this event. Mm, nice. uh, you know, I'm going to be able to actually do live music at my events. Cool. And we're not going to do any covers. It's going to be all original so that there's no license problems and we can use everything. And I think the ability to blend music and spiritual teaching together is going to really advance how we can get the word out. And mm. I'm really excited about that. Mm, that sounds fascinating. Again, the website is yeah. divinecosmos.com, so do take a look at that. But uh, we're going to continue our conversation with David Wilcock in our member section, and we have a lot more to cover, so do join us. Thank you very much for tuning in, and uh, stay with us, David, and we'll continue after this break. Well, Henrik, it's been my pleasure, and I thank you all for listening. Play. If you give 